Welcome folks to one of my favourite venues and today we're going to be fishing one of my favourite tactics, shallow up against the reeds. This is something that I used to love doing on snake lakes. You know those situations where you draw your peg, you get to your peg, you look across the far side and we all know the fish at this time of year, they want to be in shallow water, but you've got a big bed of reeds in front of you, you've got no shallow water to fish into and you know once you've got a depth of more than probably 18 inch or two foot during the warmer months, all you're gonna do on that far bank is foul hook fish. The fish want to be in shallow water. So fishing shallow up against those reeds is the way to success. So folks, before we talk about kit and bait and the approach, let's talk about the peg I'm faced with today. So across to those far bank reeds, we've got about two foot of water. We've already plumbed it up. I just know it's gonna be way too deep to keep those fish on the bottom and catch them effectively. I think at this time of year, when the water's warm, you're probably looking 18 inches is my maximum depth, really. The warmer the water, the higher up those fish want to feed, the more aggressive they're feeding, they're just going to want to compete too much for the bait. And all that's going to happen is you're going to get line bites, you're going to get loads of indications, you're going to foul hook fish. It's, begun, it's going to become an absolute nightmare to catch the fish. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to catch them fishing shallow really shallow as well. I think these fish are going to come up to maybe like eight inch deep, something like that. And they're really, really confident when they've got a little bit of cover over the heads. We've got reeds today. The reeds that we've got on that far bank are absolutely perfect for doing this particular method. And there's going to be a, a different feeding style to normal shallow fishing as well, because those reeds are actually going to help us. Now, on the subject of far banks, on a lot of snake lakes, you're going to be faced with reeds like we've got today. But a lot of the time you're going to have a bare bank or a mud bank fishery team here quite often on a lot of fisheries as well they'll actually go to the lengths of cutting out pegs because they know how important it is for anglers to get into shallow water and they know how much anglers love a bear bank to fish to it makes life so much easier so dotted around this fishery there's probably every other peg the most commonly fished pegs during the matches they've got some sort of cutout to fish in because it makes it easier but you know what it's like you turn up to a swim you've got this situation where there's a mountain of reeds in front of you, you need to overcome them. Let's talk about the bait that I've got with me because I think this is really important. You can fish this tactic with pellets. Pellets work absolutely brilliant with this tactic, but I always find that casters are the way to go. Fish absolutely love casters, no matter what species, and I think F1s and carp, the species we're targeting today, they're gonna lap these casters up. Now, these casters aren't in the best, uh, best of conditions. These are actually, some casters that I've had left over for probably two weeks now. They've been sitting in my fridge. I think this is a great opportunity to get them out of the bag and actually catch some fish using the bait. So on a commercial, not really too concerned about using mega fresh bait. I just want to make sure all the bait sinks and we can control what we're feeding in the peg. So I've just chucked them into a bucket of water, skimmed off any floaters and made sure every, every bait sinks. To go with the casters, we've got a few maggots, I think something like a maggot or a worm, little small baits that complement casters, they can be great on the hook. I envisage using just a single cast rip, I'm honest, on the hook, but I think maggots or maybe a worm head, like I say, is a great bait to use. Fortunately, not many worms with me today, so we're gonna have to make do with some maggots if we want something a little bit more durable. To kick off the swim though, I think ground bait is the most effective fish catching tool we've got on a commercial fishery. I think the small particle size just means that fish, can, they smell it straight away, they're homing it straight away. Ground bait is fantastic. Problem with ground bait is the small particle size. Every layer of the water column, there's gonna be particles floating around. And if you start feeding loads and loads of ground bait when you're fishing on the bottom, you're just gonna have a nightmare at this time of year. So. We're fishing shallow today, doesn't really matter about that. We just want something that's gonna kick off the peg and gonna instantly attract a few fish into the area. We can then regulate the depth those fish are feeding at with the casters, hopefully. So I've got with me some ground bait today. A lot of people associate ground bait with fishing on the bottom, squeezing it into hard balls or dumping it in in a really damp state, fishing it on the bottom. But this ground bait, this is marine halibut, dynamite bait marine halibut, really oily, potent ground bait suits the warm water conditions. This ground bait, we've mixed it quite dry and we're gonna cup it in very loose. We're trying to get it to hang in the water for as long as possible. 
And when I cup it in, you'll see, I'm gonna try and get as much of it to hold actually in the reeds. The reeds are gonna help us massively today, as I mentioned, with our feeding. We're gonna try and get as much bait in the reeds as we can. And what we'll see hopefully during the day is those reeds rustling as those fish try and suck the bait off the roots of those reeds. And those reeds are gonna help us keep some bait at that shallow depth that we need to present our hook bait at. Right, first thing I wanna do folks, before I talk to you about rigs for today, is feed a bit of this ground bait. So, I'm just gonna get a good handful. I'm gonna half fill my pot up there with ground bait, nice and loose. And we're gonna ship it across. in amongst those reeds. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get it right in the reeds. Push it in there, right in the reeds. And we want it to sort of hang in the reeds and make it hang at the level that we want to fish at. I've not got my weed cutter out. I probably would have, if we weren't, In such a rush to get fishing today if we're in a match situation i've probably got my little reed cutter out and trimmed a few of those reeds but i think for how we're going to fish a few reeds hanging over it's not going to be the end of the world so that's a bit of bait and i always love to get a little bit of bait in just so we've gathered a few fish and now we can talk about rigs everything's mega shallow today as i've mentioned so we've got our heavy rig with quite a bit of weight down we could have a few roots and we could have a few things under the water, a few obstacles under the water. Heavy rig with a nice positive bulk is gonna let us read our float a lot better and hopefully we can lower it in, in amongst all the, the roots and all that uh, nonsense under the water, get a positive read and make sure our hook bait is fishing effectively. This is a little inline dibber. It says four by 10 on the dibber, but it takes a little bit more if I'm honest. I like to dot my floats for shallow fishing right the way down because you can see there, we've got a really short line between poultry and float. I'm hoping for this session, every bite is literally gonna drag the poultry under the water as the fish feels the elastic pretty quickly, bolts away, hooks itself. The main line for this rig is 016, reasonably durable. I think we're fishing for carp up to maybe four pound and F1s to maybe a couple of pounds a day. So we want something that's not gonna let us down in that, that way. Hook length, 012. Like I say, a lot of F1s, 012, I think you're, you're landing most of your fish on 012. I don't think you should have any issues as long as all your knots are right and your elastic balance. We're not dragging the fish away from those reeds. There's not loads of snags over there. It looks snaggy, but I think you'll find that when you're fishing for carp next to a structure like this, most of the fish are gonna to wanna to bolt into the deep water and actually most of the bites are gonna be elastic ripping out and I'm gonna to have to sort of catch up with the fish into the, into the middle of the lake a lot of the fish are going to dive towards me. 012, I've got a size 16 hook on. Again, not a massive hook. I want plenty of hook points showing though for when we're hooking our bait. I don't like bait banding casters or maggots. I know it's got its place on certain venues, especially when there's a lot of small fish around. And if you're moving your bait a lot, slapping it in the water, I think for this method, just hooking it on with a nice sharp hook, it's as good as anything though. Elastic wise, pink shot core, probably rated, something like a 10 to 12 i'm gonna say like I, like i've mentioned everything's balanced 012 nice light elastic we want plenty to come out we're fishing for f1s smaller carp we're not trying to bully any fish so nice balanced tackle there that is my heavy rig that i can sort of drop in the gaps with that heavy bulk just to mention missed out on this if it's important the hook length's three inches we don't want a long hook length getting caught up in all them roots. We want to make sure that, that bulk is having an influence on the hook bait. It's bombing the hook bait down in amongst those roots. So short hook length, hopefully the fish are going to feel that resistance straight away, hook themselves against the elastic. Next rig. This is my rig that I catch a hell of a lot of fish on. My, my rig for when the fish are a little bit cagey, they're not going mad, but they still want to fish, feed in shallow water. Tiny floats, three B8 floats. I've actually chopped the bristle down and the stem, makes it a little bit less tangle prone by doing that. 
this will be literally dotted down. I mean, we're fishing 14 meters away today. Might not even be able to see the bristle, but it'll be literally dotted down level with the surface. It's all about creating as little resistance as possible for the fish to hook itself against the elastic. We've got a number 12 that's gonna sit below the stem. We've got another number 12 that's sitting above that three inch hook length. It's the same hook line, hook length arrangement, elastic arrangement, but it's just a much lighter flow. And even though we're fishing for fish that are feeding massively, mega aggressively, switching over to this lighter flow, it always gets me more bites. If I can get away with that heavier flow, so be it. I mean, it makes my fishing a lot easier, but I just know that on occasions that even when I've had weights, you know, 200 pound doing this method, this lighter float has been like flicking a switch compared to that heavier rig. We've got some bait in, can't wait to get going. I think the next thing we do, put a bait on, get ready with, get feeding with the catapult. Hopefully we'll catch a few fish. So folks, let's get going. I've literally fed that ground bait and maybe two or three pouchfuls of casters towards the reeds. And you can see there's activity over there already. So hopefully there's no shortage of fish and hopefully we can catch a, catch a few fish relatively quickly. Now, I think in a normal situation, with the amount of fish that are over there, I think you'd catch maybe a meter off the reeds and then we'd push our way over as the match progressed as those fish got a little bit more wary of us catching a few of their mates. But I think for the purpose of what we're doing today, I'd love to show you that poking it into the reeds and actually fishing in amongst the, the reeds tactic. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go straight into the, the lion's den I've got on, I'll show you the hook bait. I've got on two maggots. I think double maggot, you know, it's a great target bait, catches loads of fish. Everything eats it, gives us a good read of what's going on in the swim as well. So I think double maggot to start with. A bit more durable than a caster. I love using a single caster. I think single caster's the, the ideal bait when you're feeding casters, but. I think it's nice to start on something that's a bit more of a target bait. So what we're going to do is we're going to ship across, fed a few more casters as I've just before I've shipped out, and I'm going to try. I'm using the heavy rig, so I'm going to hopefully use this rig to find a nice little area where I can fish. Poke it in there. Always find the closer you to the reeds you get, the more confident the fish are. So poke in there. Now the job is keep it nice and still. Keep the line reasonably tight between poultice and float. We've only got an inch and a half maximum between the poultice and the float. So there's not much movement there. When the fish takes the bait, it should just literally pull the elastic out. Still feeding a bit of bait over the top. The great thing to do with this particular method is every now and again, just give you, you pole tip a bit of a slap on the water. Obviously the fish in these places love a bit of noise. Slapping your pole tip on the water is maybe replicating the feed going in. few more casters. You've got to be nice and busy. I've not fished this lake for, for quite a while, but quite a few matches are coming up on this lake. So it's well worth coming for a look and seeing what the crack is. I want to make sure that that's fishing. So I've got to find a, an area where we can confident that we're presenting the rig. There we go. I don't think there's any mistaking that that was a bite. Finding the, the key depth is going to be important today so we want to make sure that we're changing our rig around and finding that depth. Might have to shorten shorten our rig up a little bit, but 
That's a great start. That's the, that's the sort of fish that we're targeting. That's probably average stamp or maybe even slightly on the small side, but nice little F1 to start with. Probably about, I don't know, probably about a pound, something like that. Pound four we'll give him. Not bothering with a keep net today. I don't think there's any need. You've all seen what an F1 and a, a carp looks like, so we'll just concentrate on getting into a nice rhythm. I'm going to go with double maggot again. Need a bit of bait when we go out. Been about, I don't know, 30 casters, something like that. So we can we can almost load the reeds you see you, you don't have to feed as often as you probably would when you were shallow fishing in open water because you can sort of be confident that some of the bait is staying at mid depth because the reeds are holding some of the bait for you so you don't have to be as active although I do find it difficult a lot of the time to, to put the catapult down. I like to feed a little bit of bait when I'm shallow fishing. There we go, there's another one. And that one, you can see there, he's, he's gone around the reeds, but there's no, you know, he's out. There's no real panic, because there's just a few trailing reeds on the surface. It's not like he's made a charge for the roots. It's lovely fishing when you get it right this is so hopefully we can put a few fish together quite quickly obviously we know that you can go to a lot of venues and you can catch another f1 maybe i don't know pound and a half something like that you can go to a lot of venues and you can catch yeah, F1's down the middle maybe on a on a fantastic day, but you'd be very surprised that when it comes to match day, and it doesn't matter whether it's a an open match or a club match, you get to the weekend and these venues are tightly pegged. Obviously everyone's trying to get as many anglers on the lake as possible. The fish become massively wary and you get maybe weights of two, three hundred pounds during a midweek open when there's only five people on the lake because everyone's catching down the middle. Come the weekend when you've got 20 people on every lake, fishing becomes a little bit cagey and you have to sort of start, start searching for the fish and fishing where the, the fish feel happy. And quite often that's near the cover. So it's, it's a great tactic when you need to abide by the fish's rules a little bit more rather than you dictating to the fish what you want to do. Oh, missed that one. Just seen the pole dip down. Now if I was on a caster I'd have to bring that in but I think we've double maggot, I think we should be okay. Loads of fish over there isn't there? So folks, we've made a bit of a change. I'm gonna say two changes. And really not really surprising for me because it's how I've caught so many times in the past. We've got, I mean, little F1 there, another 12 ounce, something like that. We've got, our lighter rig on now. Now, I always feel that this lighter rig gives a much better presentation when we're over there. It always seems to be the rig to use. And we've gone to a single caster, just nicking a single caster on. 
it's so obvious that these fish are eating casters because there seems to be loads in the swim. Don't get me wrong, it's been good on that heavier rig. You know, we started okay, but we had a few donks on the pole tip where they just didn't hook themselves. I also felt that that, that double maggot, they're almost bypassing it to, to get to the casters. And this single caster on this slightly lighter rig seems to be the way to go. So shipping across, sort of found a reasonably nice area to fish, just slightly to the right of where we first started. That's the benefit of using that heavy rig to start with, that you, you can find all the, the roots under the water and, and then you can, when you do switch to this lighter rig, you can be pretty confident that you're fishing in some clear water rather than putting your bait in amongst a load of roots. We've reined it in with the bait as well, so whereas I was feeding maybe 30 or 40 casters every time, we've scaled that down to just 10 or 15. Got to obviously, it's going around the corner, got to obviously think about your feeding with every method, and it just seemed that. There was almost like too much activity in the swim. And when you've got too many fish there, obviously it's hard for them to single out your hook bait. Another little, little left one. I mean, the next step is probably to shallow up even more because I think these fish are a little bit shallower than this rig. So it might be a case of picking up another rig that's probably three or four inch shallower and seeing if we can, we can make that work. But progress is reasonably steady for the moment. So I think I'm gonna plod on with this rig and then We'll maybe pick up a shallower rig once we we know those fish are really shallow. There's loads of fish cruising around, so no doubt we'll catch even shallower than we are now, and it, it probably will make things a little bit easier as well. But while this is working, I think we can let's say plod on with it. It's even then we can just get it out there and sort of tuck it as it was falling through. So this is definitely better than the rig we were originally using, that heavier rig. It's the same with nearly all of your fishing really. The lighter the rig, as long as you've got control over it, the better. Sort of 10 casters, 15 casters over the top. You can see the activity in the swim as soon as you feed any amount of bait.
tapping work that time for that fish. Obviously, because you can't really slap your rig over there, you've got to think of other ways of creating that little bit of noise on the water surface. So, a bit of tapping is the way to go. I think. Beautiful F1. I'll put that fish back. And I think what I'll do is I'll just get out a different rig. We'll get a shallower rig out and see if we can catch even shallower because I think that's the, the logical step now. Here we go, ladies and gents, the new rig. So, because we're fishing mega, mega shallow and not really any rules here at Holly Farm, we can do what we want as in line lengths below the float and above the float. I've gone for a little micro jigger. It's basically a poly ball. Now, my issue with fishing a poly ball is the resistance on that poly ball is just too much. I've talked about resistance with that little float and we've seen that little float is far better than a, a big bulkier float. So fishing a poly ball in a conventional way, just too much resistance on it. So this is a little poly ball jigger. Beautiful little thing this is. And it means I can fish super shallow because obviously I've negated the need for a float. I haven't got the, that extra three inches of float there. I can fish super shallow, but got no resistance there at all so my plan is to ship this across single caster we can get mega shallow with this we're probably in total we're going to be fishing this maybe six inches deep something like that so where is that float rig no matter how dainty it was I'd say eight inches was probably its its limit we can now get a lot shallower and you might be thinking, well, why don't you just, just use a little bit of line, Rob, and just poke it into the reeds? You probably could, but you know what? With this little poly ball rig, you can just spot everything. You can just see it across there. You can... You can see where you're presenting it. You get a feel for whether you're on any roots. And I just feel that when you're fishing up against something, you need to know that you're, you're fishing and with a float on, you do get a feel that your, your float's sitting right or whether it's hung up on, on something. So with that poly ball, we're super direct, just like that. It means that every fish is gonna literally feel the the pole tip before it feels any resistance really. And hopefully a lot more efficient. It's only a, a little fish this time. But these are probably the fish, you know, that are causing us issues across there on that standard float setup. With no resistance at all, we're hooking them. Now, I don't know whether you've watched the video that Lee Kerry and I shot earlier in the year. It was an underwater special. It was on our website. Yeah, website's called The Edge. And it's a membership website. And we were covering shallow fishing. And we were catching eyed and we were catching roach and skimmers and F1s and catching them shallow. And it was so interesting watching them feed, how they would come up and take the bait, and how different species would come and take the bait. And it made a massive difference to how I thought about my shallow fishing. And if you've not seen it, I urge you to watch it because it's a great little watch and it'll maybe put a few things right Beautiful golden F1, that one. Beautiful fish. And there's, there's other underwater stuff on there as well. So, you know, if you ever want to see for sure how fish feed in a fishing situation, because we're, we're actually fishing up against the, the underwater cameras and the fish are feeding as they would in a fishing situation. So if you ever want to 
see that sort of action, I urge you to give it a watch because it makes a big difference to your fishing. It puts a few things right in your head. You can see this rig's working, working nicely though. Obviously those fish were, were mega shallow. Obviously tangle free as well. think there's an argument for saying we could have started on this little jigger because obviously it's a it's a great fish catching tactic but it's lovely to learn about the swim and that's where a, a normal say a normal rig a bristled float or a, a proper rig comes into play because you can learn about the swim we learn about the best place to present a rig because of the roots on that far bank we learn about the depth as well that the fish wanted to feed at. So I think you use those rigs to learn and then you can put the jigger on for, for catching them. He's a wire, wily old fish, this one. He's probably seen it all before. He's not in the, the best looking condition, but he's a nice, chunky weight builder i think it's a lovely fish to end on so we've got that shallow fishing up against the reeds folks a beautiful way to fish one that's won me quite a little bit of money in the past as well if you like these sort of videos obviously i've been doing loads of live matches recently as well think about subscribing until next time folks tight lines <laughs>